Luke chapter number 6. Some very familiar scripture. I got to I got to reading this Monday. And it just stuck. And I know that y'all know this passage of scripture is good or better than I do. <coughs> got to praying on it, got to thinking about it. The more I could <laughs> all I could think of was for the day and time we're living in. If you're able tonight to stand and respect the Word of God. Luke chapter 6, I'm going to read verse 48, uh, 47, 48, and 49. Jesus speaking, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them. And don't ever forget those three little words. I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat, beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Thank you. You can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Fathers, we come to you again tonight. We do thank you and praise for the day. For the way that you took care of us, you've watched over us. You've supplied our needs. You've given us health and strength. Lord, you've been good to me. And I know that every good thing we have is from you. I want to thank you tonight for the privilege of being able to be back in your house. Thank you for each one of these that's come out. Always kind of a privilege, a pleasure, and an opportunity to be able to come and meet together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, I thank you for the privilege we have to bow before you and call on your name. Thankful that because of the blood we can come before the throne of grace and make our wants and petitions known. My God, I thank you more than anything tonight for saving me. I thank you for Jesus and that finished work at Calvary. I thank you tonight, God, that he did it all. He didn't leave anything out, didn't leave anything undone, but he went to that cross, shed his blood, gave his life, took my sin on himself, took the punishment for that sin. Father, I beg you tonight, forgive me why I've failed you. Forgive me why I've come short, why I've let you down. Thank you for this service already. Thank you for each one that stood to brag on you. But God, I need your help again tonight as I stand and try to preach. Father, I need you to reach down tonight. I need you to help me to do what I can't do for myself. I beg you, God, to lead me in the path you'd have me to go. And I pray, God, I'll be obedient. I pray that you give me the words that you'd have to say. Show me what you'd have me to do. Praying for that fresh touch, that fresh anointing from on high. Praying, God, that you would just come down and overshadow this place. Lord, I pray that you take away anything that might hinder the service, anything that might quench your spirit. Praying, God, that you just build a hedge around us that the devil can't get through. Just go with us now through the rest of the service. You watch my mouth. Don't let me say it wrong. Don't let me lead anybody astray. And Father, pray more than anything that if there's anybody here or anybody watching online that does not know Jesus, that tonight would be the night to step out on faith, look to Him, ask Him into their heart and life. And pray tonight, Father, that I can say something that will encourage and help you people. Have your way, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, very familiar scripture, and I know that. We've learned from a child one of the simplest songs, one of the first songs I remember when I was a young man was how the wise man built his house upon a rock and how the foolish man built his house upon the sand. How the rains came down and the floods came up. The wise man's house stood firm and the foolish man's house went splat. Jesus is telling us tonight, He that heareth my words and doeth them, I will liken him to a man that built that house on a rock. And when the rains came, when the storms came, when the winds blew, and it doesn't matter how strong the winds blow, it doesn't matter how long, how strong things shake, 
He said that house stood firm because it was built upon a rock. We're living in the times today. Sorry. The time we're living in tonight, I know it's got a lot of people shaky. Got a lot of people concerned. Got a lot of people worried. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of things happening. And just cheer me out before you get mad at me. There's a lot of things that's going on I'm not happy with. And there's a lot of things going on I wish it'd go a little bit differently. And I know I've told you in the past that it's time for God's people to stand. That does not mean to go out and loot and destroy and burn. And And I'm not going to ride. And I'm not going to set businesses on fire. But I will tell you this. You threaten my family. I will take you. But I'm not going to let the things going on in this world take my peace. They're not going to take my joy of the Lord. That's right. They're not taking my sleep from me. He that heareth my words and doeth them. You ain't going to fall. You will stand solid. (laughs) That's right. And if you are sitting there tonight saying, Preacher, I just, and I understand, a lot of us are like that man when Jesus came down off the Mount of Transfiguration and he said, Do you believe? And he said, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. And we all at times, our faith can get a little weak. But I'm telling you now, right now, more than ever before in your life, you need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God is God. Yeah, that's right. That Christ has got you in your in His hand. He's not going to turn you loose. Uh-huh. And that He has never been knocked off the throne. This ain't took Him by surprise. Yeah. And if you're in Him, thank God tonight you're still solid. Amen. Now James told us very plainly in chapter 1 that we're not just to be hearers of the word, but we're to be doers also. Because if we're hearers only and not doers, then we're deceiving ourselves. You say, what do you mean? If you can sit in the house of God and you can hear the word of God preached and taught and yet totally disregard what those words say, and you think everything's all right with you and the Lord, and you're deceiving yourself. Yeah. Because if you sit, you can hear the preacher preach that all of sin and come short of the glory of God, the wages of sin is death, but Jesus is the only way, and there's none other name given unto heaven. And yet you don't ever look to that name, Jesus. Mm-hmm. I don't care how long you've been in church, you're deceiving yourself. Mm-hmm. But if we are not just hearers, but we are doers. He's told us that we're standing solid. Yeah. Now, the, I guess the question is right now, what do we got to be afraid of? Mm-hmm. We believe Him or we don't. Right. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 16, when He said, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Y'all know it as good as I do. Yeah. We just need to be reminded sometimes. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah or some of the other prophets. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood is not revealed unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Mm-hmm. Now when he called him, he said, And thou art Peter. And when he changed Simon's name and called him Simon Peter, what he was talking about was you're just a pebble. I, again, I don't know Greek, but I'm thankful I got a good Greek dictionary. The church was not built on Simon Peter. Right. Yeah. Church was built on the rock. Right. He was built on that rock that, that Daniel saw rolling through Babylon, knocking down everything in its path. 
He said, on this rock, I'll build my church. You know the rest of it. And the gates of hell shall what? Not prevail against it. Now, I got to reading that verse. And this Baptist liked to shout it. The gates of hell. The Bible says Jesus is the door to heaven. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So by contrast, why did he use the word gates of hell? If he is the door to heaven, then the gates of hell has got to be the devil and the demons. Yeah. And thank God, it doesn't matter what hell throws at you or what hell throws at me. If we're standing on the rock, he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Tonight, I know the devil's after us. He's after our nation. He's yeah. after our homes. He's yeah. after our families. He's after our churches. Right. But if we're built on that rock, and we're not only hearing what God says, but we're doing what God says, then thank God the devil ain't got a chance against Amen. us. Amen. That's right. Unless we give it to him. Yep. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Who are we afraid of tonight? Think about it. Everything going on. I'm hearing about all these protests on both sides. Anymore, I don't know who to believe and who to trust. Right. But thank God there's one sitting at the right hand of the Father said he would never lie that he was true. Yeah. So put your faith in him. Put your faith in his word. Do what he's told us to do. Stand solid on that rock. And thank God when the storm comes, and it's coming. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's coming. Yeah. Somebody asked me, said, what do you think is going to happen in the next couple of weeks or the next week or so while, while President Trump's still in office? I said, I ain't really worried about that. No. Nope. Next four years, he ain't going to be my president. What scares me is what's going to happen in the next hundred days. Right. Yeah. And changes that are going to be made. Yeah. Let's 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 don't dwell on that. Let's talk about the one that said, "I'm going to keep you." Yeah. yeah. You know, in First Peter chapter two, and he begins to to quote one of the Psalms, and I can't remember which one, but he said, "The stone which the builders disallowed." Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people trying to build tonight, and there's a lot of people trying to build their own religions and trying to build their own church. You know, think back to the scribes and the Pharisees. They wanted it done their way. They were jealous of Jesus. Just, yeah. just be honest. Yeah. And let's look at people down through the years that wanted to change Christianity. They wanted to change their, their, their own religion. I mean, look, we've got all these offshoots and still claim to be Christian, but there's far away anything other than Christ. It ain't Christianity. Right. Yeah, say right. what you want to say. Yep. But he said the stone that the builders disallow the same is made the head of the corner. And he is a stumbling block and he's a rock of offense. See, the church itself is built on that solid foundation with Jesus Christ being that cornerstone, everything else built around him and built on him. And as long as we are on him, mm -hmm. then thank God we are that church, we are that body of Christ. We are standing firm. We're standing solid. And let me tell you, when that storm comes, we still going to be standing when it's over and done with. Yeah, that's right. I remember, I don't know how many years ago it was, and we was we was getting ready to head up on the mountain to to a revival meet. And that Saturday evening. All of a sudden, things started shaking. Mm -hmm. Things started, I mean, blah, 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 just like that. Mm -hmm. When everything was over and done with, you could see the other side of the house where that tornado had come through them trees. Yep. It jumped the road, went between my grandpa's house and my aunt's house. Yep. So strong that it opened his storm door, ripped the wood door off the hinges, yep. closed the storm door. Yep. Picked her, tra my aunt's trailer up, and moved it on the blocks it was sitting on. Yep. Hmm. But after that storm was open, I couldn't tell you the story about how I didn't even have a shingle ruffled. Am I right, Mom? You're right. Roger was there. Yep. 
We have an even shingle ruffle. I mean, Amen. Except for the hand of God. I don't know. But you know what? It wasn't 10 minutes after that was done. That sky started clearing. Yeah. It was beautiful blue. Yep. And I'm telling you, even after the storm came, we were still standing strong. Yep. And that's the way it's going to be forever Amen. and ever. Yep. God never changes. Yep. That's right. And the storm's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. And those people that have tried to do things that's contrary and things, that, I'm telling you, they will go down. Yeah. yeah. I don't say that with pleasure. I don't say it with malice. Because without Christ, they're going to die and go to hell. That's right. But thank God, God's promised me that even when it's over and done with, I'm still going to be standing there. Yes, sir. I will still be on that rock. And that corner has become, he, he has become a stumbling block. He's become a rock of offense. When you begin to talk about the goodness of God and the blessings of God and the way that if you're not in Christ, you're lost. And again, I'm going to repeat something I said Sunday. I don't see how anybody can claim to be a Christian and say there's another way outside of Christ to get to God. Yeah. But... When you begin to talk about Christ and just who He is and how He is and what He's able to do and, and the power He has and people are offended and people get upset. Yeah. He is an offense. He is offensive. He even told His disciples, said, all y'all are going to be offended to me before this night, so. But instead of Him being a stumbling block and a rock of offense, Instead of him being somebody that you think is going to cause you problems or make you fall, he ain't going to be something that will make you fall. He's something that's going to lift you up and help you stand from now on. Yep. The Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 9 that when they look at that stumbling stone, that, and they did stumble on him, because what they tried to do was works of the flesh and not, work, not a work of faith. No, I've never seen him. But I've sure seen him work. Yeah. I've never seen his hand, but I've seen his hand move. Yes, sir. You say it don't make sense. Sure it does. I've seen things happen, but there ain't only one way it could have happened, and it was through the hand of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the storm's coming. Accept it. Yeah. Quit wringing your hands. Quit losing sleep. If nothing don't happen, next week, a week from today. Joe Biden's going to take the oath of office as President of the United States. Yes, sir. That's just how it is. Yep. It's going to happen unless the Lord comes back first. Mm -hmm. And based on Joe, and this ain't judging us, it's just a fact of life. Based on his stand with Christ, he still might take the oath. Y'all uh, yeah. will figure that out after a while. Yep. Number one way for that to happen, he's still going to have to be here. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah. But we're looking for everything but Christ. That's what this world's doing. And I know I've hit this the last couple of weeks. But we're looking for everything except the right thing. And we're looking everywhere except the right place. Mm -hmm. Look to Calvary. See Jesus. If death couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't hold him. Yeah. The devil couldn't keep him yeah. down. How in the world do you think I can keep him down now? He is still standing strong, and thank God I'm standing with him. He's got me in his hand, Amen. and I'm still going to be there. And yeah. when anybody tries to do something else, the Bible tells us plain in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, For other foundation can no man lay than that which was laid. Mm -hmm. You can't start over. You say, but preacher, that foundation only started... No, that foundation started in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God. Yeah. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. Then what? Then the Spirit of God began to move across the water. Mm -hmm. and God said, let there be light. Thank God. Yeah. I had somebody ask me, said, that's the sun. That's the moon. No, it ain't. Sun and the moon wasn't created until the fourth day. Right. You say, what was that like? That's when Christ began to shine 
That's yeah. when he went over the chaos and began to establish order. Yeah. And that's what he'll do in our lives if we'll let him. Yeah. That's what he'll do in our country if we'll let him. Yeah. If the light of God would, what people would let it in his, in their hearts, then the chaos in this country would go away. And just as the work was without form and void, the United States is becoming without form and void. Yeah. And darkness is creeping fast. Mm -hmm. But thank God, when God said, "Let there be light," there was light. It was good. And God, hey, was. and you ain't never been able to say nothing bad about God saying. Right. Yeah. The foundation was laid down. You saw it and see it. No, but we saw it at Calvary. We saw it at the empty tomb. We saw it when he ascended back to the Father. Yeah. And we'll see him again. Because mm -hmm. he's coming back after his church. You know, all through Scripture, and I don't know what's done, believe it or not. All through Scripture, we talk about, we hear, and we've even heard Jesus say, Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but my word will never pass away. Mm -hmm. Jesus said all these things. He said, doesn't matter how long it takes, there's not one jot or one tittle of, of the word that's going to be that's not going to be fulfilled. And you know that jots the I the dot over the I, the tittle is the cross on the on the T. Right. In other words, every I is going to be dotted, every T is going to be crossed. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to be left out. But I like something, and I, I'm going to read this because I want to out in, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. The world passed away. And the lust thereof, but he's talking about the word now. He says, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Yeah. Believe it or don't believe it. Yeah. Are we going to hear it or are we going to hear it and do it? But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Mm -hmm. He's telling us when that storm comes, when that rain comes, when that wind blows, you ain't going down. You're still going to be there. Right. Look, one of these days, and I ain't trying to be funny, but you look today at the comparison of the people who, are, are, who truly believe God and those that don't, and it looks like that Jesus is going to have a mighty puny bride, don't he? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you now, the church ain't going down. The church is going up. And all I'm waiting for is for Jesus to step on over the cloud. Amen. Understand it. It's going to happen. It's coming. It's coming. But what are we going to do? Now see, you can read this same account in Matthew chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Talks about he that doeth, or he that heareth, and he that doeth. Mm -hmm. But remember, it's also Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus said that not everyone that calleth unto, that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. You say, who's not going? Those that just hear. Yeah. Those are just here. Because they're building their, 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 their base in their soul. They're basing their eternity. They're basing everything that's important on what they're going to do. And what I do, what my works are, that's nothing but shift and sand. Yeah. Yeah. And understand that tonight. See, you know, the wind blows, sand shifts. It ain't solid, it ain't stable. I, I, I really wish I could took the time because I, I thought about that on the way over here. Actually, I would like to, to to see you go down to the coast and you see them fishing piers, mm -hmm. and you watch them building them houses right there on the ocean front. Mm -hmm. But they don't they don't dig no eighteen inch footing. Right. Mm -mm. I don't have any idea how far they go down. But they go down till they hit rock solid. Yeah. And that they'll take those, they'll take them round cardboard forms, and they start just packing them full, cement and rebar. Mm -hmm. But they don't put them supports, and I don't care if they are that big around. You just set them on top of the sand, and you watch what happens to the house. Yeah. It'll fall. Well, that's what we've tried to do in our nation. That's what we've tried to do in a lot of our lives. We're building it on something that shifts and it just ain't going to highest. It's not going to stand. Job, in the book of Job, chapter 8, it wasn't Job speaking. I think it was Elihu. I could be wrong, but it says that he'll lean on his house, but it shall not stand. 
And you say, why won't it stay? You ever, you ever thought about that? You just walk up to the wall of your house. You know if you leaned up against that wall and the whole house collapsed, you ain't got much. Right. Well, that's what we're doing when we try to do it ourselves. Right. We try to put it together. We try to keep it together. But it will not endure. We'll lean on our own house and it's going to fall. So, Jesus is talking in Luke chapter 21. I'm done with this. He's talking in Luke chapter 21. And I don't want to take this out of context because I know He's talking about the time that's leading up to the great tribulation. And I've got to be honest with you folks. I think we're leading up to it. Are we in it? Nope, because I'm still here. And if you're saved, you know you better know that it ain't happened because you're still here. But he begins to tell them that there will be men's hearts failing them for fear. Looking at the things that are coming in the earth. Failing for fear. Literally scared to death. I ain't trying to be ugly. But there's a lot of people in this world tonight that are going to lay down and they're going to be afraid to cut the lights out. They're going to be afraid to go to sleep. They're going to lay there in that bed and they're going to worry and fret over what's going to happen. Let me tell you something. I'm not one of them that believes what is to be will be because I think if you go to the Lord in prayer, God begins to move and things begin to happen. Mm-hmm. What the Bible says, mm-hmm. the effectual perfect prayer of a righteous man by his mouth. So instead of laying there, wringing your hands, instead of laying there being afraid to go to sleep, why don't you give it to the Father? Spend some time talking to Him. Yeah. Yeah. And I've told you this before. i got a sneaking feeling before you even say amen, you're going to be asleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at some point you're going to wake up and you're going to say, God, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I dozed right off. Mm-hmm. And God's going to say, that's the peace that I can give you, son. Yeah. That's the peace. There is no point in being scared. I can't change it. I can worry. I can fret. I can be scared. I can wring my hands. I can be anxious over something that might happen tomorrow. But you know what? Except for God moving in, I can't change anything that's going to happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All I can do is change what I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. In Philippians chapter 4, I know he's talking to the church at Philippi and he's bragging on them because of the offering that they sent. And he told them, they didn't send it out of their abundance. They sent it out of their out of their want. The church at Philippi was poor. And yet, as poor as they were, they knew that the church in Jerusalem, there was people starving. So they still gathered what they could gather and sent it. Paul said, because you know. He said, you've done this. And he said, you know. In Philippians chapter 4, you know the verse 19, good as I did. But my God shall supply all your need mm-hmm. according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Right now, and let's be honest, let's be perfectly honest, right now, if we stood in the mirror, and I know everybody has different different needs and not everybody's got a truckload of money not everybody's got a, a pile of food left to, you know put back up. but right now the majority of the people sitting in this church don't need a thousand dollars the majority right now I mean, I'm talking about right now and the people sitting in this church probably ain't going to worry about where their next meal is coming from. Mm-hmm. Come on, I still believe what the Word of God said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all this will be added to you later. Yeah. If you put Him first, David said, I once was young and now I'm old, but yet have not seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay? 
God said, you return unto me, I'll return unto you, and I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you cannot contain. Amen. Yeah. But what the majority of the people that's listening to me right now needs more than anything else is peace, yeah. stability, And they need to hear the same words that Jesus said that night out on the Sea of Galilee. Peace be seated. That's right. And he may not come. Listen. I told you a minute ago, I'm convinced. Yes, the storm is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the storm's coming because we've rejected God. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think our nation has been on borrowed time for a good while. And for lack of a better phrase, and this ain't real spiritual, but I believe the pimple's about to come to a head. Mm -hmm. The storm's coming. Yeah. And in that storm, he may not calm that storm. But thank God he has promised he'd calm you. Yeah. Yes. He may not stop the storm. But he's promised that he'd give me new peace that passes all understanding. Mm-hmm. So tonight, you get ready to go to bed. And you're saying your prayers. What you need to do after you thank Him for the blessings and mercies of the day, and after you thank Him for saving your soul, you need to thank Him for the fact that, God, I know I'm standing on you. Amen. Like that old song they sung years back, I am standing on that solid rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through the disappointments, trials, and discontentments, okay. I can still stand on Him. Yeah. And thank God, because I'm on Him, Amen. when the storm's over and the sky clears, I'm still going to be standing. Mm -hmm. And you've got that promise from a holy and a righteous God. Mm -hmm. Understand that tonight. I'm not belittling anybody. I want you to... I want you to be able to get some peace in your life. God's promised it to you. But he tells us. He said we need not only just do we need to hear it, we need to do it. The verse right before that, if your Bible's still open, but I didn't read. Said, why call ye me Lord, Lord? Mm -hmm. and do not the things. I think I'm right. right. Yep. Yeah, and do not the things which I say. So let's just lean on Him. Let's trust Him. To obey is better than to sacrifice, and without faith it's impossible to please Him. Mm -hmm. That old song, trust and obey, for there is no other way yep. to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Yep. So tonight, if you're a child of God, you're on that rock. Thank God you'll stand. When the rest of it's falling apart, yep. you'll stand. Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for watching over us, for keeping us safe, supplying our needs, and for help and strength. Father, I thank you for allowing us to be here in your house tonight to meet together <laughs> with our brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you for allowing us to look at a little portion of your word. Father, I pray tonight I said what you'd have me to say. And I, God, I understand that after a message like this, the devil's going to start throwing. I understand. But Father, I'm thankful tonight that not only am I standing on a rock, but I've got that shield of faith. Father, watch over you, children. Encourage them. Strengthen them. God, it's hard for us to strengthen ourselves. I'm thankful, Lord, that you are our strength. You are our rock. You're our deliverer. You're our fortress. You're a very present help in time of trouble. And God, tonight we know that the storm's coming. But I'm thankful tonight. On the authority of your word, when the storm clears, We'll still be standing. Father, go with us now through the night, through the rest of the service. Have your way. 
For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.